Hey, how's it going, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday, February 28th, 2024, 11.44 a.m. We got one more day here in February. I know, kind of odd, right? The leap year upon us. It is about 11.44 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe does show a 1.9 into the uh, Gulf of Alaska region. Also a 4.4 striking here across areas of... Uh, well, looks like uh, Iran area, it looks like. We'll go ahead and check out this here in a little bit. Looking at the latest activity here on the Iceland site. Does show a broad region here of earthquake activity. Now, I know we had seen a little swarming going on here outside the Grindavik area last night. Uh, a little bit more broader activity here across the area today. And got to watch this because I think we're getting close here to seeing some further eruptive activity there across the Grindavik area. Uh, the latest informational statement here shows that the increased likelihood of a volcanic eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula, that includes the Grindavik area, uh, warning signs of volcanic activity can be very short. So things are uh, kicking back up. Uh, I think we'll see uh, a little bit further larger earthquake activity and uh, a lot more leading up to the eruptive activity, which could be literally within 20 minutes following all the larger activity that's taken place. Right now we're not seeing a major amount of earthquake activity but what we're looking for is basically a, a couple hundred earthquakes or so in about an hour time period or less uh, before eruptive activity takes place so we're still kind of keeping an eye on the movement there in iceland all right uh latest activity let's go back over here and see where that 4.4 is at here from the emsc model um <clears throat> all right 4.4 let's see where did it go did it disappear it's on the globe. 4.5 Vanuatu, but that's not that location. We'll get to it here in just a second. Another one just popped up. Here we go. 4.5 Vanuatu. I'm speaking earthquakes into existence. You guys see that? All right. Uh, so last night, yesterday, we seen a 5.4 down here in the Macquarie Island area. We did see some movement overnight. Said to watch this here around New Zealand. We did get hit with a 4.2. Uh, just here off the plate boundary, about 26 kilometers deep here underneath the area. Just outside of Wellington there, North Island. Also a handful of, of uh, other quakes in there as well. The, the GeoNet server is reporting this as a 4.4. And uh, as you can see, it looks like uh, some threes in there as well. So keeping an eye on the New Zealand area, it's definitely showing some more activity. As noted here over the last couple days, this is the last 24 hours. So things kind of tuning in here to the New Zealand area specifically. We'll keep an eye on that for some larger scale potential. Uh, there's that 4.5 fairly deep here um, <clears throat> into the area of uh, Vanuatu. This one came in about 8 o'clock this morning now. I know we got some further earthquake activity here in the last hour, but this one, look at that, 600 kilometers deep. That is a deep earthquake there into the area, putting quite a bit of strain up around this region here. Um, let's see, what do we got here? Oh yeah, no, oh, this one, this one is a new one that came in here. Uh, so that's, uh, definitely a deep earthquake, but that will add further strain here across the plate boundary. I was looking at this here. Uh, I thought this was this morning, but it is the one that's just coming in right now. All right. So yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye on areas upstream here. There's a couple different ways this can go in terms of pressure gradients, uh, a lot of time, these deeper earthquakes do trigger stress at the subduction zone levels. Uh, and it's been, goodness, it's been a while since I've seen any deep earthquake activity specifically here in this basin. Uh, let's check this out here real quick. This is the historical models out here, obviously away from the main plate boundaries here. You can kind of see this, uh, follow this horseshoe bend. But there is definitely a little area here that does see some deeper quakes where the epicenter of today's quake is. And the darker circles here indicating that deep earthquake movement. Uh, so yeah, definitely uh, keep an eye on this area. It does look like things are getting stirred up here. Uh, keep an eye Port Vela region along the subduction zone area. Alright, uh, further out and about here. Take a look and see what we got. Um, aside from the 4.5 coming in right now. Got a 4.8 here into the Japan Trench. 5 o'clock this morning here, local time, 4.8. That's about 56 kilometers deep here. Not a not a big earthquake, but definitely seeing some broader, deep movement here 
across the area of the Pacific Plate. Also along the Aleutian Trench, we did get hit with a 5.5 this morning. This one pretty deep as well into the subduction zone, so things may be starting to get uh, more active at the surface regions here. And of course, the Kurokamachaka is an uh, area that hasn't seen any major earthquake activity in quite a while. And take a look at the, you know, the length of this subduction zone alone and the accumulated slip rate. Uh, you know, we should have seen some larger movement here by now. And it's been awfully quiet in that area. Uh, typical smaller earthquake activity across the Anchorage area and the Cook Inlet. Across the California area, West Coast, not a whole lot going on through the Pacific Northwest. Up here in the northern Nevada area, getting a little bit of activity um around the fort well this says fort bidwell but it's well east northeast of there this is in the sheldon these this used to be called national antelope refuge they've renamed it uh, i was out here a few years ago checking out the uh, uh geology uh, of this general area quite a bit of volcanic activity out here older ancient volcano activity uh quite a few lava domes and whatnot as well <clears throat> It looks like they're having a little bit of swarming activity there today. Uh, when I was out here, they were having uh, literally about hundreds of earthquakes a day. That's why I went out here on these dirt roads and it took me a little while to find it, but I eventually made my way out here uh, to check out the swarming. Not a whole lot of surface, aside from uh, volcanic activity, um, you know, as far as signs of past volcanic activity, very visible at the surface uh, with the lava rocks and obsidian and all that stuff that comes along with uh, volcanic activity out here. But uh, this earthquake activity looks like it's really at the surface level 3.0 and a couple other smaller quakes in there as well. So continue to watch that. That's normally a sign of uh, pressure out here against the uh, west coast. And we are seeing a little bit of activity here yesterday in the northern California area into the southern end of the Cascadia Mega Thrust area, um, 31 to 16 kilometers deep there. All right, uh, looks like we're having some further activity in the Bay Area, 1.6, just off the Hayward Fault. We did have one earthquake here on the Hayward Fault from yesterday. Uh, no, I take that back from today, 9 o'clock this morning, a 1.1. Keeping an eye on this, it's been somewhat active here uh, recently, and that Hayward Fault is no doubt a dangerous fault system as it, uh, well, it, it goes right through communities out here, highly populated regions, very close to Oakland. Uh, you know, of course, the San Andreas Fault much much more capable of producing some larger earthquakes, but this fault has the capability of um, potentially doing more localized damage here across the area if we see some larger movement on it. Uh, further down south here into Southern California, uh, most of this activity here that we've seen from yesterday, let's see what we got. Yeah, there was that 2.9 from yesterday and a couple other earthquakes here. Uh, really not seeing any major swarming going on. A couple of smaller earthquakes down here across the Brawley seismic zone. But aside from that, uh, uh, just kind of keeping an eye on it. Now this area down here in southern, uh, well, in the Gulf of California, 3.1, a couple other earthquakes in here as well in the divergent zones. That could amplify conditions further up here across the plate boundary. We'll continue to watch that. It's definitely been active here in the Gulf of California recently. A uh, handful of smaller quakes out here in this region once again. Um, there's uh, this uh, power grid out here, some type of solar farm. Um, and it looks like this activity is at a new development. We looked on Google Earth and it shows some new development out here. Some new, uh, new operations going on here. Um, this map here isn't really updated, but uh, the Google Earth map definitely tells us that there's some newer operations going on. And this region has seen a lot of earthquakes swarming out here. Look at this. 429 earthquakes specifically uh, in this area. Well, a little bit over here as well. But uh, yeah, something's going on. That's human caused uh, with whatever operations are ongoing out here. Um, I'm not for sure how uh, the solar panels and whatnot, solar farms can create earthquakes out here. But uh there's something going on out here. That's a lot of earthquake activity, and uh, I'm sure these guys know it. Uh, you know, their whole process. I'm going to have to look a little bit more into that. But, uh, yeah, got a decent earthquake swarm there again today. Continue to watch that. Any more information there that you guys might have on it, uh, feel free to pass along here. I'm kind of kind of curious about it. EarthmasterMail at gmail.com is my email. 
uh, movement here across the Texas area. The oil fields once again got some uh, got some big fires out here striking the areas of Texas. Unfortunately, quite a few dry a lot of dry conditions out here. It's really weird because here uh, in Texas, it seems like the fall time and um, early spring they get these uh, big fires. For us here in the West Coast, is normally the summertime, but uh, yeah, that's uh, a lot of vegetation burning up out here. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here on the map. But just for uh, review, just double check this, see if we got anything going on in the seismographs. I don't really see anything of importance. Whatever this is comes and goes every 24 hours, and it stops overnight. So this could be machinery. It could be um, who knows what that would be making this noise. But it turns off during the nighttime, comes back on during the day for quite a few hours. So... Um, I'm really not for sure what's causing that noise, but it's not underneath the ground. It's not earthquake activity. Uh, earthquake activity, maybe this one right here, but uh, this other stuff that you're seeing here on the graph is not related to any, you know, earthquake activity or volcanic movement. Aside from that, Yellowstone looks pretty quiet. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity out there. The uh, Middle America Trench area right here. Nothing showing up, but we're still seeing some earthquake activity out there in a cluster of movement. Quite a few threes and fours there from yesterday. South America region, most of the newer activity shifting down south here across the Chile area. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet aside from one little 2.6 up here, but we'll continue to watch that. Iceland, uh, you know, I think, we're, I think we need to see a little bit more earthquake activity here across the divergent zones to see activity pick up there uh, around the Grindavik area. Uh, Indian Ocean, a little bit of activity out there. Here's the Java Trench 4.0 coming in, northern side here off the coast of northern Sumatra. Uh, a little bit of movement stirring up out here recently. Looks like it's trying to make its way up around the plate boundary. Over the past week or so, we have been noticing a swarm of activity pushing up across this region. Looks like we may uh, see some further movement across this plate boundary here soon. Uh, Hawaii, not a whole lot going on out there. In fact, uh, Let's zoom in here and see what we got. A total of seven earthquakes. Wow. Not that big of a deal. Uh, 3.1 down there in Pahala area. Underneath this area, not a whole lot of further change there across the region of Hawaii uh, in terms of the uh, volcanic activity there. A look at the UWE tilt meter here over the last 30 days. Not a whole lot going on here since that major displacement of magma recently, but we'll continue to watch that and uh, report back on any changes that takes place here all right space weather activity look getting a pretty decent m flare this one's got a subsequent cme associated with it go figure right as soon as it gets out of the earth directed view it wants to pop off cmes now that's unfortunate i don't know if we're going to get any type of uh, uh effect here on earth but uh, 3590 has been the culprit of uh, a few x flares and uh, quite a few m flares as well the latest magnetogram image still shows complexity out here, but it's off on the northwestern quadrant now. Not 100% certain if we're going to see any geomagnetic storms from that CME that's just been produced. Uh, again, that uh, the CME, you can tell when it kicks up here, there's a more of a broader range of uh, activity. Uh, not, not a little short spike, you know. Well, a long spike uh, on the graph but very, really short in duration that's an impulsive type event like we've seen with the past x flares here recently but this looks like a, a possibly an eruptive type m flare which uh, is associated with a cme uh, we'll have to watch that see if uh, we get any type of uh, uh maybe just a glancing blow from that uh, cme but we'll continue and keep an eye on it uh not a whole lot of further development from any of these other sunspots here uh, I think if I had to pick one aside from this one right here, maybe be this area up here. A little bit of growth here in, in close proximity. Um, but yeah, this one here even could produce some further X flares. But uh, I mean, it's we can see it, obviously, right? But I don't know if any CMEs are going to head off in this direction. There's the uh, D-layer map here showing some radio blackout on the sunlit side of the Earth. Due to this M flare kicking up, Looks like it may want to pop off an X-flare here soon, but uh, facing kind of facing away from Earth here. 
All right, uh, what else we got? Severe weather. I know they had a whole bunch of severe, severe weather yesterday. And last night, goodness, uh, today a little bit different story. Still seeing a, a broad area of thunderstorm activity out there. No, Really no threat for tornadoes. Seen a pretty well-defined photogenic tornado last night around Chicago. That's quite crazy. Uh, wind event looks to be maybe the uh, main possibility, the main threat out here for severe weather. All right. Um, numerical models. We got a storm knocking on our door out here uh, for the West Coast. Going to bring with it uh, quite a bit of snow, low elevation snow as well, maybe down around Salem, uh, Eugene, and uh, Medford area might be getting some snow with these levels coming in. Quite a bit of cold air. Um, and some rain here in the Valley of California. That's going to stick around pretty much all weekend. Just scattered chances of uh precipitation and whatnot another storm behind that it's basically just going to be a a few days of unsettled conditions uh, with rainfall accumulation maybe a little bit stronger storm as we head into the middle of next week and some more behind that so uh and that type of setup here bringing some cold air dipping down here and stretching into the gulf pulling up gulf moisture that can create some severe weather out here from these low pressure systems so we'll have to watch that we're getting close to that time of year here uh, where severe weather is quite common out here in this region uh, and that looks to be the case as we head into uh first couple weeks of march all right uh what else we got here seismograph stations there look pretty quiet some interference are right there on yellowstone the lake yellowstone station that's not actual earthquake activity uh but yeah things look uh, fairly quiet out here on the board for now He'll be off here on the side. Got uh, a few things I got to do, some school work and whatnot. But we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later. Stay safe and um, don't forget to subscribe while you're here. We still got about, oh, we got about 50 50 in terms of subscribers and those that have not subscribed in terms of viewers, overall viewers. So I would like to have you on board. Please feel free to hit that subscribe button. And uh, click that notification bell here as well. That way you can get notified when we go live on important space weather events. And, of course, earthquake activity. Is there another 3.5 coming in there? Looks looks like it. Hold on a second here. Is that down there in the Gulf? Could be. Yeah, I've seen a 3.5 pop up here. Uh, one of these is fairly recent. 1226... 10, 14, it's not that one. One of those popped up a newer ring here. But, uh, all right. We'll continue to watch it. Stay safe out there, folks, and uh, have a, a wonderful day. Sunny right now here in California, but a little bit chilly. I'm going to try and get out there and do some more yard work before uh, the rain and cold weather comes in. Take care, folks.